This is one way that a hacker or threat actor could hide or mask commands that they run on the target computer that they're attacking. Now, don't get me wrong. Let me temper your expectations here. This can be discovered or caught by process invocation. Hey, seeing the program actually start up on the computer or in logs. It kind of sticks out like a sore thumb if someone actually looks at the logs. This isn't some crazy elite hardcore kernel root kit or anything fancy like that. That, but it is a very clever way to obfuscate and just sort of, hey, at least evade static, classic, Dumbo string matching expressions. Like if someone were strictly looking for mimicats.exe or malware in whatever like static shape, this can evade that detection by just trying to return or reach the commands that they want to run in a different way. Personally, I thought it was kind of neat. So in this video, we're going to play with it. Before we dive into the video, here is a quick note from today's sponsor. Developers are constantly changing the digital landscape, but building secure software isn't always easy, especially in growing applications worked on across massive teams. Companies end up with mountains of code, and they have to make a choice, stay competitive or stay secure. But with Sneak, you don't have to choose. Sneak helps bake security into the software development lifecycle. Sneak helps you scale and streamline by automatically scanning your code, dependencies, containers, and configuration files, finding and fixing vulnerabilities in real time. And it is super easy to use. You can sign up for free with my link below, import your repositories, and there, Sneak just finds your vulnerabilities. You can fix all these issues with just a single click. Sneak automatically opens a fixing pull request so you can just merge them into your repository and move on and it fits seamlessly into all of your existing tools. IDEs, the command line, CICD pipelines, cloud infrastructure, and more. Millions of developers love Sneak. And you can see for yourself. Get started for free with my link below and develop fast and stay secure with Sneak. This is actually something that I stumbled across over on Twitter. Florian Roth, the incredible individual that he is, was sharing some sweet thread intel that he found in another vendor's article and blog, and it was zooming in and focusing on this persistence mechanism that a threat actor might perform. Uh, hacker, APT, whatever you want to call it. We'll dive into the real article in just a moment. But the point that he emphasizes here is that they're trying to use the scheduled tasks executable, something that will set up some automatic trigger to run some code or start up a program or do anything really at a scheduled time interval in an automatic way, right? So it doesn't require user invocation. It uses invoke expression, some PowerShell commandlets to be able to run code passed as if it were a string and matching wildcards or glob is the name of it patterns with on, within the command line, within the shell. They use an environment variable here, noting the dollar sign, uh, question marks as a single character wildcard, a couple letters in there to help narrow down and tune what exactly this will return. Of course, backslashes as new folder or path separators and asterisks or stars to wildcard out and glob multiple characters. That giant long string can just ultimately become, hey, running scheduled tasks or SCH tasks.exe. Sorry for the uh, cat, gif, or gif, however you want to say, just freaking out on the right-hand side. Uh, I did want to bring this to your attention because, of course, hey, Florian does give credit where credit is due, linking to the original article here by Securonix. And this is their advisory on Steep Maverick, a new covert attack campaign targeting military contractors. Uh, again, I believe this is late September from their tweet, uh, or at least Florian's tweet kind of showcasing this. And if you wanted to scroll here, through here, you're more than welcome to. Kind of cool, kind of neat, goes through regular phishing email, typical attack chain, a zip archive with a shortcut file faking as a PDF file, getting some communications with their C2 server, command and control, lots of nested stages in the Matryoshka doll of native inherent scripting languages, stuff that we've showcased on this channel just as well. And they start to dig through this and do some neat, fun stuff with it. Uh, you could explore, etc., etc., etc. Let me scroll way, way down to that portion that they uh, showcase this. Other than some slick defender bypasses, they do discuss how they're working in the registry and uh, getting some persistence that also with scheduled tasks as we were just discussing. Kind of neat, but let's go ahead and play with this. Let me fire up a terminal and show you how that can be done, right? Because say I'm on a Windows computer, just hey, poking around on my own host. 
as you know, you can go ahead and define variables and set them to values within PowerShell or the command prompt, DOS, batch, whatever you want to call it. In PowerShell, those are denoted with this dollar sign right at the start here, right? So if I were to go ahead and echo out or display the variables variable, sorry, uh, that will give me the value that I just set. Now, you know that there are some environment variables just as well. In PowerShell, you could actually view these by using ls or dir or what is it, get child item for the full, yeah, okay, the full child thing. Here's some random crap in my home directory, sorry. <laughs> uh, the full actual commandlet for dir or ls being aliases. You could do that on the PowerShell provider or PS drive, a drive for PowerShell called env for environment variables. You'll have the dollar sign prefix here. And if you add a colon, the same way you might add a colon for like your C drive or your D drive for USBs that you plug in, E, et cetera, et cetera. You can do that just as well uh, with that simple env drive or that ps drive um did i get that wrong maybe uh dir maybe i don't need the backslash there or i'm just completely wrong oh i'm sorry as you're treating it as a drive you don't need the preceding uh dollar sign that is just for variables that you might reference within here let me show you that see here i go i printed all this crap out you can see my username you can see my user profile being a path within my machine uh and other interesting things like a system drive or a system root as you might have seen reference in that article there obviously if i wanted to echo that out now i use my dollar sign colon you can say system root and that returns that value if you are in command prompt, you don't have that just as well in like hardcore original classic CMD. You can use the command set, I believe, and that just displays and shows all of that here on your screen for you. But uh, variables in CMD are represented in a different way. They actually use the percent signs. So let me echo system root one more time, uh, and that's displayed there. Anyway, the interesting thing that they did is used this system root with those weird, wacky uh, question marks to denote a single character wildcard. Because if I were to change this T to a question mark, that should evaluate and match as if it were just, hey, trying to retrieve based on a lookup table. The T could be substituted for a actual question mark here. Same thing with another wildcard for the other O and the other O, and then these others. Uh, however, if we get to a point where I'm not able to retrieve all of these, oh, have a typo there, sorry. Add some question marks, add some more question marks, add some more question marks, ta-da. Eventually I'll get to a point where this is so abstracted that Windows won't exactly know which one I mean. It says, hey, I cannot process this variable because the variable path, all these question marks, is resolving to way too many items. I don't understand. It needs to be narrowed down. You can get or set the variable value only one item at a time. But if we were trying to match all these, a potential one might be a T if we had that at the very end there. Because, oh, maybe just that certain length of characters for the, the entire size of that string T at the very end here, with however many characters this is, only one potential environment variable would match that criteria. And that would be system root, in this case. Gets the same value as before. Interesting thing, though, some of you might notice, well, this is just multiple wildcard characters repeated. Can you not just use the asterisk, like we've seen, to go ahead and glob that out? Just give me a value that ends in a T. But that doesn't work. It actually doesn't like when you try to use wildcards within the environment variable that you're trying to retrieve. Kind of an interesting gimmick. That doesn't work for us. But if we took our sample example, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, T, and then tried to expand out of that path, like C windows. Now, what if I wanted to try and reach system 32? Okay, that gives me potentially a path, right? Like I could... I don't even have to echo that. Let me see if I can DIR or LS, just as I was referring to, get child item. Whoa. Uh, that returns all of the files in there because we've properly referenced that actual directory. Let me add the question mark here again and here again. 
uh, that gives me the actual directory that I wanted. Rather than reading everything out of it, we just matched and globbed that correct one. The question is, how far back can we go? If I add some more question marks here, ooh, now we've got an extra entry. It actually returned not just System32, but SysWow64. So now we've lost a little bit of our accuracy in, in zooming in on just the target that we wanted. Because if we were looking for scheduledTasks.exe or notepad.exe or calc.exe or whatever, whatever, you could hey, extrapolate on this W script, MSHTA, if you want to do some malware stuff. But now we've got this extra thing in the way. That's why we can't just use a straight up star asterisk glob because it's going to turn everything. We need to narrow that down. And that is exactly what they're doing within that sample. And I thought, that's kind of neat. That's kind of cool. They're like covering up all the ways that they might be able to, oh, eventually end up running uh, something with a two here at the end. Looks like we need maybe an S preceding that so that we can remove our other false positive here or the match that we don't want with Twain 32. That gets me system 32. And now I want to use, I don't know, c.exe. Well, that gives me a whole lot of them. Can I get something like that? Uh, okay, doesn't work because custom install triggers just at the L. Let's see if we can get lck. That gives me strictly calc.exe. Now, if I were to go ahead and, I th did they use IEX? Can, will IEX do it? It will. And now we fired up our own calculator. Super simple, innocent proof of concept. Just cheesy stuff to obfuscate running the calc command in one way or another, right? So let me kill this. Anyway, I thought that was kind of neat. That was kind of cool. You could have a ton of these potential variations on how you might go ahead and execute something. Uh, again, using DIR as a proof of concept validator that you can reach it, you could just as well use start or whatever and, hey, fire it up just like that. So, silly me, I thought, hey, I'll play with this. I think that's kind of a neat idea. I wonder if we could generate all of the potential possible ways that you could obfuscate the command that you want to run, or a binary, like a, a, a lolbin, or living off the land binary, a natively installed executable shipped with Windows that could be used to do something, anything. Ultimately, what if we had a tool that could just go ahead and given a path to a binary that you want to run, spit out all the potential options, and you might be able to find the shortest one or the, the quote unquote stealthiest one. Again, bear in mind, hey, this can be discovered, obviously, if a real human being actually looked at it. Uh, Note, that's just examples of exactly what I was doing before. And we kind of had some sweet bantering back and forth on the Twitterverse. Hey, uh, is this honestly all that cool? I don't know. Not really. Like, look, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, having some good conversations with Chris. Um, I met him at Wild West Hacking Fest, which was awesome. Chris, if you end up seeing this, great to chat with you. Uh, and note, again, take this with a grain of salt. Look, it's nothing spooky scary. Uh it's just something that's kind of interesting and neat. Uh, there's some sweet conversations again here, and this is exactly what we start to discuss. Like, seriously, if manual triage is in place, if a human being actually looks at this, it sticks out like a sore thumb. But, hey, it might just be some stuff that could slip right past an automated tooling that only relies on uh, automatic detections of static strings. And I mentioned, hey, I'm starting with the environment variable prefix, but you don't have to do that. Like, you can just obfuscate or mask and hide the entire absolute path with each subdirectory in the way. So, anyway, that was my fun 1.30 in the morning excursion. And I wanted to show it to you, because if anything, I think it's a little interesting. And it might be a worthwhile project for you if you wanted to tinker with this idea just as well. So I put together this script. I'm calling it NV, because, hey, whatever cool name, environment variables, ah, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and NV will take a potential target for a binary that you want to try and obfuscate here. So if I passed it, just the string of C colon uh, backslash backslash to escape it, right? System32 and the path to calc.exe. This, hopefully, if nothing goes wrong, will try to determine what are all of these options that you might be able to use. And I envision this to be ran on an attacker's machine, right? Hey, this is the hacker, this is the pen tester, this is the red teamer collecting this 
already ahead of time so that they can add this into their payload or copy and paste it onto the target, whatever they need to do. This is not a script or a program or tool that would end up being on the endpoint uh, on the target and victim. And I go through this with a couple variations. It spits out just a couple of them going through shortest um, and how it displays it because it can generate and take a lot of time. That's kind of been the biggest fault with this is that, sweet, I, I, I made this thing, but it might take a long, long time to be able to determine all these potential paths. So if I go ahead and actually open this thing up, uh, but hey, before I do, look, I'm a little embarrassed by this code. Look, it is not good. It is disgusting. I said that outright. Uh, I think it's pretty crappy and I kind of want to clean it. I literally just whipped this together in a couple hours. Uh, I, I want to rewrite this thing in Golang because it's so slow. Uh, I don't even want to show this code to you. So forgive me. I'm going to get my ears full of, you know, angry YouTube comments. But anyway, firing this thing up in Sublime Text, uh, it does some stupid functions and I, I could add, of course, documentation and I, I, I repeat code and crap and a commented bull. Look, don't even read it. Don't even look at it. Uh, what if I were to change this mode though or a stupid variable that would eventually be like a parameter or flag or an argument uh, that will just go ahead and display all of the findings? That is where it's not going to try to collect slowly and stage only the shortest value Values. It'll spit out every single possible determination of how you might be able to reference this. Uh, if it actually goes ahead and tracks them all down, it should be, here's all the question marks that will fill them up and all the potential asterisks or wild cards that could go there. And obviously you'll see the zero or the O for system root and the T being filled out there. Uh, so that's just a crap ton of potential options. Anyway, if I turn this off, like it's cutesy to do the little calculator example that I did, but if you wanted to do something that actually had some oomph to it, you know, like scheduled tasks.exe or MSHTA or WScript or anything that might be able to do something more than pop open a calculator, it takes a long time, like 30 seconds to a minute. It's, it's, it's not ideal. Uh, so ultimately I'd like to rework this. Um, but if anything, Hey, I thought it might be an interesting idea. It might need just kind of a cool thing, a little project. If anyone else is interested in this sort of thing, just as well, uh, I'd like to tinker with it more and recreate it in Golang. Uh, but I don't know if, if rust tickles your fancy, I saw Mike Taggart, you know, jumping in, uh, whatever language you want to put this together in, uh, or, or just kick the tires and play with it and see if you might like to explore this just as well. It will eventually, I promise, figure out some options for scheduled tasks on exe. Um, and I'm trying to think of other better ways to optimize it because I realize if I'm trying to glob all of system 32 and see what patterns do I match in the regular file system, reading all that output and like checking the entire directory every single time, Probably not that good. That's why I wanted to cache the subdirectories in that output there. But it builds out a list, and ultimately if I loop through that entire list every single time trying to pattern match against it, eh, I, I, I really probably haven't saved all that much time. Um, there might be some better, smarter ways to go through this, but obviously there are tons of different ways, especially with all those wild cards and singular positions, that you might be able to mask or hide this and only retrieve the specific path that you're looking for. I tried to give this enough coverage and dead air so that it would give results for you, but it, it hasn't yet. Uh, <laughs> okay, there we go. Cool. Now we're getting some hits. Uh, you can see that there. And these hopefully will be a fine candidate. You can see uh, we're using some of the question marks as well as the asterisks here because I wanted to keep those coupled and only looking for the shorter options as it finds them, looping through those potential combinations and permutations. So if I were to try this, uh, fingers crossed now, if I DIR this, there we go. We get our scheduled tasks. If I were to IEX that, let me add a space there. It'll execute scheduled tasks and you could pass it arguments and do whatever shady shenanigans you might want to do as pen tester, threat actor, red actor, red, you know, you know the drill. Anyway, that is all I wanted to showcase in this video. Kind of a quick, hey, off the cuff thing. Hope there was some interesting learning in there for you. I don't know if folks are cognizant or tracking, oh, that question mark can be a standalone wild card match in PowerShell. And if you love obfuscation as much as I do, I don't know, I just thought it was a neat trick. And if you wanted to piece it together in a way that you could generate all this crap just as well, hey, Maybe that's a fun idea for a project for you, and maybe we can make this a little bit faster. Um, I don't know. Maybe it might be a neat tool, but again, 
please take it with a grain of salt. Look, this can certainly be detected. It sticks out like a sore thumb. Obviously, the process is going to execute to begin with. It, it's not crazy leet, but I just thought it was a clever trick. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do all those YouTube algorithm things. Like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. Hey, Patreon is a thing. I know a lot of people aren't too happy with the whole Patreon security firm team thing. So look, if you would like to still support the channel and the crap that I do, uh, I would love if you'd be willing to, hey, join the YouTube membership. There is that blue join button, I think, down below my face. Um, would appreciate your support and any of your kind, generous donations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna go to bed. <laughs> love you, everybody. See you in the next video.